<laughs> in your glass here, Jeff. It's iced tea. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Is it really a fancy scotch that you have, or no? It's pretty cheap scotch. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Can I get some? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're recording a bit later, so so some people are having drinks in this uh, podcast here. You started it. I started it. Yeah. Well, it's you no. Know, it's uh, after five. After five, I feel it's okay for us to have drinks. Is it after five for real? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, We're no. doing like uh, overtime edition podcast. Overtime edition, yeah. 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 Overtime edition. Yeah. <laughs> so, welcome back to the, the Tribute Games podcast. Uh, Tribute Games is an independent game studio in Montreal, and we are making games such as Mercenary Kings and Wizard, which you can find on a variety of platforms. And uh, that's our show is pretty much us talking about the behind the scenes, what it's like making games, and uh, discussing the games we're playing as well. So, uh, I'm Eric Belzil, I'm the writer at Tribute Games, and I'm also the social media manager. I'm Dom2D, and I'm digesting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Stefan, I'll join, you, I'll join you on that. <laughs> also doing some art. Oh, I also do design sometimes. Yeah. Uh, Justin, art and game design. Uh, Andy, uh, programming. And Jean-François, also a programmer. And full-time boss. A full-time boss. <laughs> 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 Sounds awesome, the way you say it. Yeah. yeah. So we don't have Carl this week. No. No, no. He's busy. <laughs> he's busy being a father and a, a comic book man. Okay. Uh, so I'll, I'll try I'll try to be the, the Carl and just ask questions. But do your best Carl imitation. I don't do imitations. <laughs> you do imitations. Carl? Yeah. Um, Go for it. Um... Uh, okay, so I'm drawing Batman. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, it's, okay. I think it's a, it's a good building block to a better, uh, a better I, impression. Okay, say it was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I don't do imitations. Well, you know. Sorry, Carl. We, we love and miss you, Carl. Yeah. Um, guys, what have you been playing this week? I finished Shantae, and uh, it was great. Nice little uh, walk in the park. Uh, What's Shantae? Shantae was a. It's the third of a series of a platformer made by Way Forward, and you play. It's like a little genie girl who attacks enemies by whipping her hair. Was it originally made by Way Forward, like yeah. a Game Boy? Yeah, it's their own. Yeah, it's, it's, it's their own uh, franchise. They actually really originally wanted it to be on PC. Okay. So, like, by the time. They got around to finishing it. It was always like, ah, you know, let's just bring it to another different platform and stuff. So, like, even when it came out on Game Boy Color, the GBA had just come out. So they were always a little bit behind. But, you know, 15 years later, the franchise is well established. So so, so these games always kind of seem really easy to me. Like, from I haven't played one to completion, but is, does it get any harder at some point? Or You know, the first one was a bit tough. But this one was easy. Yeah. And, uh, like, I finished it without, like, game over, not once. Okay. And initially that kind of bothered me, but it's actually a really good sort of, like, observation because it kind of even made me rethink about, like, uh, challenge and game design in general. Because I think people definitely want, like, a return on their investment when they start yeah. playing a game. So if they know they're going to be able to finish it, they're going to stick with it. Mm -hmm. And then you think, well, then what's the point of, like, giving any kind of challenge to the player? I think that's where speed runs come in. There's that, but also it, you might put the challenge as the, the the focus for the player instead of the story. Like, I think, Shante, your goal is probably to go through and see the levels and beat the boss, but there's nothing else after that. Like, it's linear, right? But a yeah. game like Spelunky, the challenge is everything. Like, it's... it's yeah. It's because it's hard that it's it keeps you coming back. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So uh, you can do it in a number of ways, and I think all of them are good. So yeah, I, th I think it's it's definitely kind of made me rethink things because anytime I finished a game and I haven't seen anything that resembles a game over screen, yeah. I always kind of thought it's busted. Because it'd be like, you know, like, hey, Dom, uh, let's uh, start playing basketball. And then, you know, we win the, the, the grand championship or something. You know, it's like, well, if you never have any, like, failure, you don't have any sense of, like, progression almost. So and It's been a big topic this week, too, right? Because we played this at the Curses and Chaos yes. this week. And difficulty is, like, there's so many ways you can do it. Uh, especially since Curses is both single player and uh, co-op. How do you balance those things? And yeah. so, but you could decide to just make it easy and let the players go through it, or make it challenging that it takes ten hours just to get good enough to yeah. maybe finish it. 
So, yeah, we're definitely probably a little too old school in our tastes. And I think that caters to a certain public, too. Mm -hmm. But it does give you some pause for reflection and think, well, you know, maybe there's something in, like, giving players a definite sort of, like, promise of of completion. Yeah. And then you can give the challenge in other, th in other ways. So, mm -hmm. yeah, anyway, that was fun. And then I also started uh, Fantasy Life, which is very deep. It's deep? Yes. How deep? Oh, God, I don't even know. Like, that's the thing. You throw it down the well and it's like... But is don't is hear it, nothing. <laughs> is it deep only in numbers, or is it deep in like the the depth of actions you can take? In in like I I have like I don't even like it's 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 impossible to say right now. Okay. Like that's the thing I haven't I can't even see the end of anything of the multiple things that you can do. You're okay. never at a loss. It's it's really like masterful in how it's designed. Yeah. That's cool. So that's what I've been up to. What about you guys? I I've also been playing Fantasy Life. I like, uh, it. I like it. It's my like when I'm about to go to bed, I just play like half an hour or an hour. Your cooldown um, game. Yeah, it's my cooldown game. It's been very good for that. Like I slowly get all the jobs. There's for those that don't know, there's twelve different jobs that you can do in the game, and they're all relatively different. Like you can be a, a woodcutter, so you just go and chop down trees, but you can also be a hunter that throws arrows at monsters, or you can be a blacksmith that takes ore that you mine and make items with them. Mm -hmm. So they're all kind of different games, but all in all, when you grab all those jobs together, you can kind of do all of them at once. Like you go into a run, you kill monsters, you grab a bunch of resources, you come back and make items with it. And then you get better at combat because you have a better sword. Right, right. But that's the part that's interesting to me is that it's not only about one of those things, it's kind of all of those things. Yeah. And that's fun. Yeah, it's fun because we both went at it in different ways. Like I just beelined one class in particular yeah. to get as far down as I could and like, Again, I still haven't seen the end in sight. Mm -hmm. And I'm you, like 15, 17 hours in. Yeah, it's kind of funny because you, you done, you did the, uh, the, the main combat yep. class basically. You did the path paladin or mercenary? Mercenary, yeah. Mercenary, yeah. But you, you haven't done any of the crafting yet, right? I started with like, uh, uh smithing and, um, okay. mining. So okay. I just, just started. But the, it's, it's funny that you can basically go anywhere in the world now. Because you're strong enough? Uh, there's still stuff that's blocked off, but it's pretty big. Like, I can go most places. Okay, so now you, now you can just get the crafting and then start picking up resources everywhere. Yeah, exactly. It's it's uh, It was frustrating for a bit because it's like something. Like, I couldn't chop down trees. Yeah. I couldn't mine for ores. And that's why I got all the jobs because I was like, I want all of those things. <laughs> yeah. That's all I want. Is there a story in that game where it's yes. just like Shenmue's uh, pick up pallets and <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. just work? No, um... All, all, all the characters, all the, the, the classes that you can get all start with kind of an intro story. Okay. So the, there, each job, for example, the, the hunter has a, a hunting master that tells you how to hunt. But it also gets you into a small story about hunting and like other people that are doing it or learning it or like maybe there's a legendary master somewhere that you want to find and stuff like that. I, I did, the first two classes that I did, I went through the story and it's basically just teaching you where to go and what items to use. But I skipped all the other ones. Because you have the option when you start a new class to just skip it. Uh, right. Because <laughs> that's not what I wanted in the game. Like, it's pretty long cutscenes with pretty good dialogue, but it's still a bit boring. Skipping yeah, stories? No. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry I'm so sorry. Uh, but yeah, I'm skipping those. But there's there's also a, a main story that is pretty interesting so far. You can really play it at your own pace and do whatever you feel like. And you're never at a loss. Like, I'm never confused. And there's always stuff to do and stuff to explore. There's night and day cycles. I mean, it's robust. It's yeah. it's pretty well crafted. Combat is pretty simplistic, but it's exactly what I needed for that game. Yeah. Like, uh, I've also been playing like like uh, I told Steph this week. I played 12 hours of Diablo 3 on Saturday. <laughs> uh, actually, 13 because it was uh, daylight saving time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I played from seven to seven with with a friend co-op Diablo 3. But and you play that on console, right? On console, yeah, the, the new PS4 edition. It's really good, it's really solid, it's really fun and smooth. The combat is really simplistic also at some point. Like, it's, it's really complex, there's a bunch of things you can do, but right. you can also just plow through monsters pretty easily. But the last four or five hours that we played, we switched to a harder difficulty. Okay. And that was really hardcore and really focused, and then you really have to time your things well. And then going back to fantasy life, it's so smooth. <laughs> it's like, there's like a main attack. And then they do a, a very well telegraphed attack. They're about to charge the right. room so you can move away. It's 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 also a very good combat system because yeah. it's simple. 
So that comes to like your other idea where like in Shante you don't see a game over screen that still follows that same trend where like you just basically do stuff and yeah. never fail and just go at your own pace. And it's nice. very rewarding because you, you beat a couple monsters, they drop a, I don't know, a fang or some money and then you pick a flower and then you chop down a tree. I don't know. It's so, so hippie. But. Yeah, but it, <laughs> even though it is like really just kind of life, uh, easy and, and, and fun like that, like I, after about 10 hours, it started to feel a little grindy and I was walking around and then there's like this like master level boss monster that just was prowling the map. And I, I just kind of poked him, and he one-shot killed me, and I was like, nice. all right, so there's actually some meaty challenge okay. here, too. Oh, cool. um, I haven't played the multiplayer. Well, we played this, uh, just a bit just to test it, but I haven't really played the multiplayer or the online, so... But the multiplayer seems to be just we're in the same world. Yeah. So we we're, we can don't even have to be in the same place. You can just do your thing and yeah, yeah. be in the same same universe. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. I, I like that. They, they, they didn't feel the need to invent a different mode or anything. It's just... Yeah. We're all together in this world, and mm -hmm. we can have flowers. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> ever, si ever since uh, Quebec government outlawed fl uh, flowers, we can't pick them anymore outside, but I'm glad we finally have a video game we where we can do that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's the Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Grand Theft Auto for us, because uh, we can't do that outside here in Montreal. It's terrible. How about you, Steph? Have you been playing something? Other than eating chili, uh, chili, chili cheesesteak? Cheese oh, God. For me to use the steak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I've, well, nothing really that interesting. I, I, I played a bunch of uh, uh, Toby's... Uh, Vertical Adventure? Yeah, it was okay. You finished really? it, so I guess it was... Well, yeah, I finished one character because I have this... Problem, <laughs> Man, mental problem Session. where I can't not finish things. It's super cute, but I, I think they try to do uh, too many things with the controls. And it's basically a platformer where you go down into a level and then have to go back up as it kind of crumbles apart. Yeah, exactly. Oh. That's pretty interesting. So yeah, it's it's really it's really nice, and the uh, the look of it is is really cute and. Like it looks like it should be really fun, but the controls aren't tight enough I, for for my taste. Just kind of a meh. <laughs> kind of reminds me of that Wario game on GameCube where like you Chicken? had to go. Um, no, I'm not sure where you had to go get like a uh, some trophy or something yeah, at War the end. Then you had to like run out of the. Wario the Land dungeon. Four was like that. You needed to get through a level, get a treasure, and then get the fuck out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's an interesting principle, especially in in uh, Toby. The level changes a whole lot. I think in Wario yeah. also like there were blocks that appeared or disappeared depending on which state you were in. That makes it a kind of puzzly. A bit. Yeah, yeah, it's cool, but it it, it stays really really simple yeah. and shallow. A bit shallow. Yeah, but if the control were, would have been really tight, it would have been really, really cool. Like, really simple, but really fun. But the fact that the controls are a bit floaty and just not, not precise enough, it makes it not really that fun. I don't know. I played the Rochard, super floaty. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Uh, platformer, like a 3D one. Yeah, this one was kind of better because the, the, the gameplay wasn't really uh, relying on the character being super, the controls being super tight. Okay. So it, it didn't really matter that it was floaty. And, and they explained it by the setting, like it's a, it's a mining, uh, mining companies in space. And I played Shank, the first one, pretty old school. So you're just going through the Steam store and just playing yeah, all Yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> there was a <laughs> Halloween uh, super sale. Oh, yeah, that's right. So, yeah. You know, I have all those games and <laughs> with all these Steam sales, I can't get around to like beating or even trying most of them. Yeah, so it, you it, could it, almost say you're running out of Steam? Ooh. Oh, that was a uh, pretty good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it really... Um, it really bothers me, like I when I I buy too much stuff and I, I I don't play them. So right now I'm trying to not buy anything <laughs> new and just play the games I have. So yeah, I have a bunch of stuff, uh, old, 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 old stuff, yeah, that I have to to go through. How about you, Andy? Uh, this week has been pretty quiet. I uh, mostly been planning a move to a new apartment and stuff. So I haven't really gotten much time to just sit down and play games. Like That's so. alright. 
Yeah. Uh, as for me, I'm still playing uh, Zelda Link Between Worlds. I am still loving it. It's again, I'm really impressed how the uh, how the 3D mechanics, how they made it not a gimmick and made it like, they baked it in the whole game. I'm in the first, I'm in the, in my first dungeon in the in Low Rule, which is I guess they're the new Dark World. It again, it's still fresh and a lot of fun. I'm really impressed. Uh, like just the, the the boss in that uh, dungeon, it's a, a sort of a big ghost with a shield, and then you have to go and flatten yourself on the shield on its shield, and then go around and attack. Like that's the type of uh, fun, puzzly uh, logic that I like in a Zelda game, especially in a Zelda boss fight. I feel like you know, in the last couple of years, all Zelda boss boss fight eventually end up being the same. You just use the thing you got in the dungeon. And uh, and you use it against the bad guy. So now this is a bit more different, and I feel like all the the big the big um, uh, bus moves are or strategies have all been done in either in Link to the Past or in um, exactly. or Carrying of Time. Yeah, yeah. Like it feels like every game since is sort of rehashing yeah. the stuff yeah. we've seen in those two games. So that. Kind of little boss battle like was felt really yeah. fun. I, th- I think the flattening kind of power is is really the Joker in that game. Like it adds something that like kind of a wild card that adds to all the other powers in a way. Yeah, I again like I said, I really did not think that that would be such a great yeah, right. idea. Like it, it, it's. Funny that by becoming flat, it adds a new dimension oh. uh, <laughs> whole, uh, to the whole thing. But here you go. Yeah. Here yeah. you go. Have you, have you done some of those temples that are basically big challenges? Uh, yeah, the challenges. Like you, they're basically flattening puzzles where you need to figure out a way to flatten and then uh, pop out or somewhere else and then go up the thing. And then it's really like complicated sometimes, but it's really uh, well. In, in some of the levels, there in some of the dungeons, there's that. But, okay. yeah. but there are some like uh, specific temples or just that. It's just one giant room where it's really complicated to. Move. I've not uh, come across that yet, but it's it's interesting. Yeah, it's really interesting, and uh, again, I'm really impressed how that's something I talked about last week. How the whole uh, renting items mechanic really changes up the whole game, mm-hmm. makes. Like if when you rent items, uh, you eventually you can buy them. So just having to buy them makes that the grinding and getting more money uh, is more significant. Whereas before on Zelda, it was not really important to get that money. So that makes it more important. But also renting the items and when you you die, like it, they're being taken away from you. So when that happens, it uh, it raises the stakes for when you die in a way that had never been. Mm-hmm. Really happened in Zelda. It's, it's interesting how New Super Mario Brothers two and uh, that Zelda kind of came out around the same time, and mm-hmm. they were both really focused on the coins or the the rupees, depending. Mm-hmm. But they, it's everything is around that. Like in Mario, it's all like everything is related to the coins. Everything gives coins. Coins are rewarding. The rupees are way more important than that one because of the shop. But also, everything seems to be, be giving rupees. The puzzle. Uh, the puzzles are all about trying to reach your rupees. Yeah. And it's way more fun now. And it's fun too because, like, I think this is the first Zelda in a long time where, like, your purse isn't at its maximum pretty yeah. much for, like, three quarters of the game. Yeah. Like, I found with, like, what Yannick was saying in recent Zeldas, like, there doesn't seem to be any consequence to anything. You yeah. always have enough money to buy whatever you need at yeah. the time and you get to you it. You don't really need it all that much. You, yeah. ne- you need the money to buy the, the bigger purse. <laughs> that's pretty much you just fill it and that's it and then you're, uh, you buy that one bottle at the beginning of the game and then you're you're good yeah. so uh, yeah I'm again I'm really really impressed and how it, it's uh, I feel it, it comes up with its own interesting stuff so I'm enjoying it beyond the oh this is a rehash a rehash of something I really really like yeah. so the new, the new mechanics are great. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, like, I'm starting to think, like, are they going to make a new game without that? Because that, <laughs> that'd be crazy now. Yeah. Like, it feels, or if they can find a new thing. Yeah, I think they will always find a new thing. If they can find out, like, a, a new potent thing, like flattening yourself on the wall, like, that's be, again, it's going to be pretty interesting. Yeah, it's pretty ballsy also to add a mechanic that has nothing to do with, like, what Link is. It's just like, Flattening on the wall. That, yeah. that would be like in, in other kind of game, like indie games or stuff. And so yeah, like I like how it's not a cool badass power. Yeah. It's becoming a drawing on the wall and just like 
it's something that's I can characterize as being very Nintendo in a way. Mm-hmm. Like he doesn't Link doesn't transform into a cool dragon or a dumb wolf like in another Zelda game. How about you, Jeff? What do you been playing? Oh God! Let me guess. Why? Yeah, <laughs> Destiny. No, I'm still on Destiny, and I'll say this: like it's the first game I actually bought the season pass for, and I've always been against season passes, but this one, I guess. When is, well, when is it coming out? So. Um, I think the first DLC will be uh, in December. So a season pass is basically you pre-order some DLC content, <laughs> which is kind of embarrassing to like say the least. I, you like, usually save like five bucks. Yeah, it's for, ridiculous. For three but... DLCs or something. So, I don't yeah. understand that that term, the like season pass. It's why not port- just pre-order? What, what was wrong with pre-order? Because it doesn't <laughs> sound as cool. I don't know. <laughs> this, this yeah, is I think it was Borderlands that invented it because they wanted to do more than one season. So it was like this season pass is like includes these three DLCs. Oh, because yeah. season pass really comes from iTunes when you pay something yeah. and it'll download every episode of a show uh, thought- as they come in. So they they just borrowed that term. But right. I thought season pass was for like sports tickets. Like oh yeah, we got season passes oh, so, yeah. for yeah, season tickets. So maybe they're trying to rope in all. The Sports fans. Well, I I hear like sports fans are like this has season pass also. <laughs> <I'm in. laughs> yeah, so then they, they buy it. They love what? it. DLC. Oh, yeah. I guess I have to play this now. Yeah. Are you are you at max level in Destiny? Uh, not yet, okay. but I started getting legendaries, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. And yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to for my friend to give me back my 3DS so I can start the Bangayo Spirit. I want to I want to see you play that cuz you seem to be you heard, you played the old ones also, right? Yeah, on Dreamcast. Yeah. That was a pretty awesome game, but I never got around to trying the DS version, so yeah. What is this good? Bangayo? Yeah, it's kind of like uh you control a mech and a, I don't know how you like it's kind of like a bullet hell uh, platformer kind yeah, of puzzly like, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. It works like with a mechanic where you can shoot like at minimum, like, 50 missiles on screen, they all leave trails, and the rooms are all, like, really tight and puzzly, so, like, you're ricocheting, like, a hundred missiles through down corridors and stuff, and, like, you're, right. you're, like, using this at a right timing to sort of, like, get a combo. It's, it's, it's really insane and very, like, has a nice aesthetic uh, to it. Yeah, cool, uh, cool. It's fun, yeah. But uh, they and they actually make a lot of jokes in reference to the first game. Yeah, someone was telling me that on the DS, it actually like slows down because there's just too much going on, and apparently, like it's a gameplay feature because it allows you to kind of like, oh, slow yeah. down time and like think about what you're doing and stuff. Sounds kind of weird. Uh, it gets pretty bad actually. Like sometimes it'll actually stall for like a solid second. There's, <laughs> there's a level where you basically are like at, a, at a, like a standoff against another mech who can shoot. Mech missiles the same way as you like every time you get threatened it's like you get more missiles to fire back so it just keeps stacking on top of each other until the point of it's like i don't know thousands of missiles (laughs) it it can't display them and it's just like stalling the game while it does this it's a feature yeah Yeah. but uh this being an old game boy or ds game this is before like they actually had like a lot of like online and transfer Oh yeah, that's funny. Yeah, they had a they had a pretty ingenious way of actually like you could there was a level editor or something like that and you could spend maps how? Yeah, there's a level editor and you could send your maps to other players um in the same room by using like the like it just outputs sounds like kind of like a fax machine. Yeah, and the microphone then you have to use the microphone to yeah. capture the level. That's, so that's the, like that boggles my mind. Like why didn't he just use the multiplayer aspect of the DS <laughs> or something? I think it was still like uh, very nascent. Like it wasn't quite there yet. So uh, maybe it was just like I remember that from way back when. It's like that's so weird. You actually output a wave sound, and it's actually just a signal and. Information. Can you try to make one just by, <laughs> just by beatboxing. <laughs> <laughs> when you see what you get, it's like, ooh. Uh, now is the time for Dev Corner. Hey. Come on, <laughs> wow. Sounds like we're going to have another big yeah. talk this week. I'm yeah. digesting, I'm sorry. Is it that That's boring okay. working at Tribute? No, it's pretty awesome. Come on. That was the Philly cheesesteak talking, folks. It's the Philly cheesesteak. It's Justin, so yeah. there's been some uh, playtesting for Curses and Chaos this oh, week. Oh, has there ever? That's been fun. So what What happens when that happens? Okay, so like... If you say so. Well, <laughs> I'll tell you. Like, I've been pretty much working in a bubble for a while, so... Mm-hmm. 
a lot, most of the content's kind of in very in a basic form. So now I'm feeling like, okay, there's enough to play here and having people at work starting to play it. So, uh, Jeff and, uh, we're not, yeah, uh, not no. Jeff. Dom and, uh, Steph were both gracious enough to start, uh, putting some hours into it. So they're giving a few walkthroughs and we just take notes. Mm -hmm. It's funny because you, you basically wanted to, um, test your, your waves, your, your right, right, right. level design basically. But it, it became also about figuring out what the, what, how the mechanics feel and, yep. and what the little details we can mm -hmm. iron out and everything. Now so, that we have good content to play. Yes, in. yes. Yes. Yeah, so in the game is you're pretty much your two characters facing off waves and waves of enemies yes. with different patterns. So that, so you are testing that out, like see, and what are you looking for and what kind of stuff are you picking out? Mm -hmm. Like Justin, like when he tells you that, like what do you take on board or write down or well, stuff like that? See, and, and, and like it, like there's so much feedback coming in at once. It's like you really just have to take really good notes, mm -hmm. and then after you know a couple hours, you just prioritize and say like, okay, what's the things that came up the most? Like mm -hmm. if Steph and Dom both had like the same kind of comments about things, it's like, well, that that yeah. kind of holds. Like some for example, there there's an enemy in the game that you you were pretty used to the game, so you were used to that yeah. enemy, but. When we start facing it, we've never seen the the witch. It's a witch that yeah. we were <laughs> talking about. We both told you that yeah. we always died because of that <laughs> enemy, uh, because of our pattern or right, our right. HP and then uh, our special attack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so that's the kind of thing that you probably were looking for: is which enemies are too strong, which right. waves are overkill. Because when there's three witches, it's yeah, clearly yeah. overkill. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, that's the thing. It's like, I'm still pretty new to this whole game design thing. Mm -hmm. So I'm figuring out a lot as I go. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I guess like the, the, the strategy is make as much content as you can, have people play it. And that way it's just like yeah. you just have mountains of data and feedback to, to work from. Like right now you have like a notepad and yeah. there's a, it, it's a quite a large notepad. And there's a bunch <laughs> of things yeah, written yeah, yeah. on it. So what I want to know is, uh, uh, I'm wondering like, what do you write on it? And then as you have that list, um, do you go case by case? Do you address like what happens when you have? How did that list come together, and what do you do with it? Okay, well, what's it's, on line number three? That's what he's asking. What's on line number three? <laughs> yes, I think line number three was the wolves. No, I don't know. It's uh, we just really just again, it's like you address the things that came up the most. Like I think uh, maybe the response time of the jump kick was something that came up a lot. So it's like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. well, that's a very basic attack. Like you do it, it's one of your primary attacks. So if something primary to the game is not quite perfect yet, that's obviously something you have to address. If there's something where it's like, this might be a cool idea, well, that's maybe low on the priority. So you want to just address the things that come up the most and then work down the stack from there. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I also have John give his feedback on it too, because he's the one programming it and he's got really good insight yeah. about things. He knows, he knows the cost of all those things on that list. So. As well. And also, he, I think he, since he's a designer also, he, like for example, he came up with the recovery uh, mechanic no, was that you? That was, that was actually Steph. Steph. Yeah, okay. Steph came up with that idea. So, like, for instance, like when you get knocked out of the air, you, your character will take a tumble, and it's often times where enemies can just gang up on you. Yeah. So it, it's kind of unfair, but it also it's like a risk reward thing because you know that you can do a lot of damage in the air, but you're also very vulnerable. But to address the fact that when you get knocked back, it's kind of a bit too unfair. So it was said, frustrating. Well, yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, he figured like, why don't you have a recovery? And it's like, oh yeah, that's actually something that comes up in a lot of beat em ups where like, if you're falling, you can time it well and you can do like a, a double jump in the air and recover. And you can, because you can press the jump button again. Exactly. And because it's something that's kind of a staple, it's, you know, people would be like intuitively ready to do it anyway. And there's also a, a, an idea of timing to it. This might be a little bit too technical. Like I, I no, no, clear no, in no, my head. Let me be Carl for a second. I love this kind of stuff. Hey, let's hear your Carl. I don't know. I Come never on. Have... Just there's a little Carl in all of us. Uh, <laughs> He's gonna do it. I enjoy this stuff. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's just being soft spoken. Yeah. And, uh, but direct. Like, yeah. So there you go. So thank you. Continue. That's good. Yeah. So um, what were we talking about? The recovery. Yeah. yeah. Because again, it's something like I think people would expect to want to do because it exists in a lot of games and there's a timing thing involved. So it's not like a gimme. Like you have to actually consciously do it because the falling time 
you know, eventually you'll hit the ground. So if you're good enough, you'll be able to recover, and it's awesome. Like, it's one of those small little detail things that, like, makes a huge, huge difference. So because the game, I think generally we kind of agree it's a little bit stacked against you right now. It's, like, a, more than challenging. It's kind of a bit unfair at times. Yeah. We're just trying to bring it back to center a bit because, mm-hmm. you know, to the other yeah. extreme, it's like if you do too many changes at once, the game goes, you know, yeah. to the left side where it's like... Fantasy life. It, no! <laughs> like basically, this you been paying attention? <laughs> you, you basically want to get to a point where frustration is not an issue. Like, the player doesn't feel frustrated. He feels like it's fair and you, it can get better. So right. then the content can get harder because yeah. the player is always always feels in control. So he's like, oh, I can I can beat this. Yep. Like, it's not my... my it is my fault that I failed this yeah, Exactly. Yeah. So, and, and, you know, you gotta take a lot of this with a grain of salt too, because, like, at, one thing that was kind of satisfying is seeing that anytime you guys played two or three times in a row, you always got better. Yeah. So it's like, ah, there is a learning curve to it as well. Mm-hmm. But then you have to also remember, like, the tendencies of what people like and expect now. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like games aren't necessarily easier, it's just the challenge. You can kind of address it in different ways. So I would definitely want to make it more fair. Yeah, but it's also important to have people who have never played the game yeah. test it uh, often, like not like always try with new people. Yep. Because like you're gonna do a bunch of fixes pretty soon, and then I'm gonna try it again. But I'm starting to get yeah. used to it, so I'm gonna be a little better. So you, we always need to get new people in that don't know about anything, and then they try it, and if it feels comfortable right away, you're you you hit you're on the right track. track. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of like a reality check where yeah. like you're so used to your game, you've been playing it for like six months or a year, and you just have all the mechanics down. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, you obviously think it's super easy, but then when you see people actually playing it, yeah, yeah, yeah it was super useful. Like this week, I also tested the prototype that we were working on, and with just three people, but it was enough to even if it's super early, it was enough to know what they would stick on because I'm getting used to my stupid controls that are not super precise yeah. and not super mm-hmm. great. No, but, but it's not. It's you're not great right now. That you're showing for someone who never listened. Oh, like, yeah, sorry. you're doing like you're working on a. Uh, on the platformer type of game. Yeah, it's a it's a different game than Curses. It's a new new IP, new game. Uh, and whoa, 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 IP. It is a new IP. But uh, yeah, I just I just we me GF and uh, and Andy we worked on our prototype and it was kind of at a point where it was testable. Like it was it had a full loop, it had, it had a full uh, full uh, playthrough. You could play through the game. So it was at a point where we needed. N- People with fresh eyes to see uh, the game, play the game, try it. It is not great right now, but it's fine. Like that's the whole point: is to know which points are not as fun as they should be, and how the players should feel about the game and everything. Mm-hmm. It was a good exercise for sure. Yeah. So things are coming together. Uh, I should also note, uh, Steph's been doing a bang up job with the intro, which was also written by Yannick. Yeah. So Yay. it's fun yeah, to see awesome. everyone's contributions. Really like. And uh, John right now is uh, coding a new boss, so before long we're actually going to have a lot of new content. Yeah, so we're all working. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so no, it's fun. It's really fun to see a game come together and like all these small changes play a big part. Yep. It's fun. What about me? You're not mentioning what I'm doing. Oh hey, well what are you doing there? Well, I added online to your game, Woo. and it's funny because at the start of the week. He's like, I might have this ready for the end of the week. And this was Monday. And like Monday, it's like, yeah, it's pretty much done. <laughs> so, it's, uh, still, it's still not like perfect, but oh, come on. it's playable to some extent. So you'll be able to play co-op online? Uh, yeah, and uh, offline on consoles cool. or PC because on Vita... Two players on one screen is <laughs> yeah. on one controller. Yeah. <laughs> Would it be possible? <laughs> like just um, technically, I don't think there's enough. Probably, Would there be enough? Uh, there's um, enough buttons, yeah, someone no? could probably have like the D-pad and a shoulder, and then the other <laughs> one has the buttons and a Press shoulder. Press up to jump. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. All right, yeah, you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not. But uh, yeah, no, it's fun, and there's always like smaller things that get added that make a big difference. Uh, yeah, screen sizes and crap like that. What are you working on, Yannick? Uh, right now, I'm doing some. Uh, well, I'm always manning the social media, but I'm doing some uh, 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 writing for uh, the new IP for your game. So, uh, what I'm doing right now is, uh, like I mentioned in the past, I'm trying to generate ideas for the game and uh, generate like. Uh, 
an outside an outside world for our game to, uh, to take place in and just like come up with ideas that uh, eventually uh, that hopefully you and uh, Stefan like and uh, would inspire you when it's time to mm -hmm. design uh, levels uh, or characters or stuff like that that you yeah. you'd find interesting and hopefully eventually we can like uh, thread that into like a a simple but uh, a, a simple story but that still like uh, grabs the player yeah so right now, like ideally, we could have uh, uh, we don't know how many levels we'll have, but it would be fun to have like uh, fun high concept ideas for each levels. Yep. Like I, I, I'm trying to think that every level would be like a a fun B movie or a, a pretty good Doctor Who episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so well, that works. so th I'm coming up with stuff like that and now I, what I've started today actually is I'm gonna write either like half a page or a full page about ideas for different levels, what's the backstory of that level and how it works, yeah. and uh, hopefully you guys read that and either you're inspired or you chuck it in the bin. But uh, No, but it, that's, I mean, that's awesome because we're not trying to just do like the lava level and then the ice level. It's more, it has more depth and Where does that ice come from? Flavor. Yeah. It comes from Montreal. Yes. Are um, there any AAA movies? Like, is that a thing? AAA movies? Yeah, there's B movies, but... Well, I guess any big blockbuster movie would be uh, considered like a triple A movie. Yeah, I think Transformers is a triple A movie. Uh, uh, like, does Michael Bay say like this is my triple A movie? Uh, I, I Transformers. Know. I think Interstellar would be a triple A. But there, anything that's a big blockbuster that comes out with a big campaign stuff it is considered like a triple A. How about this? Are there B movie games? Uh, um, now there is actually. There's really? a bunch of indie games that are like, especially our game, our games are uh -huh. really badly made, but people love them anyway because they have like their self -aware. one aspect that's really good. Like they're, they're usually pretty self aware too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty fun to see the the spread of games going. Far into the quality side yeah, yeah, with the yeah. AAA with big budgets, but also like the super small budget that had to do something one thing right. Yeah, and they like, still become cult. It's pretty. Who's gonna be the Ed Wood of the video games industry? Yeah. Mm. Uh, There's that um, House of that game. That's well, yeah, it's kind of House of the Dead. Uh, uh, Overkill. 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 Yeah. yeah. That was pretty B movie. Style. It's a it's pretty B movie, but it's still <laughs> somewhat triple A ish. But yeah, yeah. that was pretty good. Or maybe like uh, I want to be the guy. Yeah, that's that's pretty like poorly made, but it's kind of it, it has something really great, which is the hardcore level design. Yeah, it's not approachable at all. What are we talking about? <laughs> Movies and quality. I, and... I think we were talking about ending this podcast because I think we're at the end, guys. Yep. At the end. Yes, we're at the end. So yeah, uh, when, when Carl is not there, it just goes really fast because nobody has questions. Hey, there you go. I think we, we, we miss you, Carl. Yeah. Guys, where can we find you on the internet uh, this week? I'm at Dom 2D, but only if I survive the chili, cha, chili cheese steak that I ate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the chili uh, cheese steak? Yeah, chili yeah, cheese steak. I, won't, I won't be on the internet, I think, this week. <laughs> right, uh, Justin. Uh, Justin underscore Sear, C-Y-R. I'm Eggboy Color. And Jeff Major with a zero. So, yeah. Dude, I really hope that one time you just arrive on the podcast yes, and you say Jeff Major with an O. You know what's like, funny? Oh! <laughs> you know what's funny? Someone, I got a, like an email this week. Like someone was trying to email someone at jfmajor.com oh, okay. and it turned out that the guy had like some other, like the same name as me, but, uh, I think his email is at Jean F. Major or something <laughs> like that. And I was like, at least I have the dot com. I'm pretty awesome. You can find me at Yannick Belzil on Twitter and you can find Tribute Games at Tribute Games and as well as, uh, facebook.com slash tribute games, uh, on just tributegames.com if you want. So, uh, please follow us. If you like this podcast, uh, please give us a review on iTunes. Five stars, please. Five stars. Five stars. <laughs> and, uh, uh, buy our games. We recent, we currently have, uh, Wizard and Mercenary Kings that's available to you. Please consider buying them. It would be great. That's pretty much it. So, thanks for uh, listening to us and we'll be talking at you next week. Yay. Yeah. Sauce. No, Sauce. Don't, don't make that thing. <laughs> you know what? Because then in like 14 weeks, we're going to be like, Sauce. Sauce.